Absolutely not. It's called mothering or nurturing and it's so important. You've held her in the womb really for nine months, so you're just doing an extension of that and it's getting your little one used to the outside world and actually it's the best way to get to know your baby because you need to know what your baby feels and thinks and the best way to do that is in arms. I do have a couple of guidelines and the most important one is not to do anything in arms that you can't replicate in a cot. This is where a lot of people become unstuck, like either they feed to sleep, rock to sleep, walk to sleep. All these procedures can't be done in a cot. I do what I call cupping, and it's a movement like that, that you do on the baby's bottom or on their bottom like that. And you can actually, when they're lying in a cot, actually replicate that. So you're not having to teach them new ways of self-settling or resettling when they go into the cot. A lot of mothers make the comment that they don't have enough milk. What we must remember is that it takes a minimum of six weeks to establish breastfeeding. So if you feel you don't have milk, you've got to actually change your brain waves and say that you've got milk. Then the hormone oxytocin, the hormone of love, or the squeezing hormone kicks in, then prolactin kicks in, and hey presto, we've got milk. So the most important step is to tell yourself and reassure yourself you've got milk. There are other things that you can look at by increasing your milk supply. Um, fenugreek is really good for helping increase the quantity. Protein shakes are awesome for the afternoon. I encourage um, dairy-free ones and protein snacks half an hour before feeding will also help boost your milk supply. When the baby is due to go for sleep, then the baby can be passed over to the dad or another person and mum can actually have time out for herself. So it's a good time if mum's got support to just be able to go off and have a nap or bath and do the things that you used to do without a baby. So just taking time out for you. Having a village around you, so getting lots of people around you to help cook meals. Gosh, it'd be great to have a soup on the kitchen stove. So visitors are really good at bringing dinner around. The mums don't get medals for having a clean house. They get a medal for having a happy baby. My motto for a new mum is to snooze when the baby sleeps and eat and drink when the baby eats. We all thought sleep deprivation was when we partied all night, went to work the next day, it's got nothing on sleep deprivation with a newborn baby. So it's okay to say no to those friends who want to spend you know, the whole day with you. A lot of babies do hate bath time. They hate being undressed. Um, my recommendation is that you always feed your baby first, then pop them on the floor with your nappy off while you run the bath. Pick them up and bath them. If they're crying in the bath, just place a wet cloth over their tummies. Sometimes that will calm them down, um, but be quick. It takes longer to undress a baby and to dry undress a baby than it does to bath them. So a bath should be very quick. Another thing that a lot of mums and dads do is that they leave the baby in the water for quite some time because the baby's happy. Thank goodness my baby's not crying. But what happens is that when you take the baby out of the bath, they are overtired, so they will cry longer while you're trying to dry and, and get them dressed. I have a lot of mums and dads say to me that their babies don't like to sleep, they're social butterflies. Well, yes, they are. It's our job as parents to teach them how to self-settle. The difference between a baby and an adult at night time is that when you and I wake, we know how to fall back to sleep. Babies don't. Sleep is a learnt behaviour. There's two nutrients that babies need, food and sleep. They do walk hand in hand, so if they're not feeding well, they won't sleep well. If they don't sleep well, they won't feed well. I do believe every baby's different, so there'll be different tired signs for different babies. Some of the common tired signs are yawning, rubbing their eyes, gazing into space, just staring with nothing sort of going between them and the space. I tend to do the old fashioned way is I look at the clock 
Once you start using the clock as a guideline, you actually sit back and actually start enjoying your baby because you're not looking for those tired signs. When they wake, the first thing you're going to do is feed them. It's very important to remember that newborn babies can't wait for food and they're full of life and energy when they first wake. And then it's an awesome time because they're the happiest with their tummies full is to put them down on the floor and start letting them sort of look at their hands and look around. Um, I sometimes put a book down so that they can read a book. Tummy time is also important. Now a lot of babies don't like going on their tummies, but if you only put the baby down for like two seconds, they will eventually get to learn that tummy time is awesome. They need tummy time to um, build muscle tone in their backs. The parenting journey can be very lonely. Um, a lot of mothers, when they first have their babies, have actually been career women or been very busy women within their own right. So to suddenly become stuck at home with a newborn baby and this little person that wholly depends on you can be quite scary. So there's lots of help out there. Have a look at your local community centres. Have a look at your village around you. But more importantly, the, in New Zealand, we have our Plunkett Society and we have a Plunkett Healthline. You have your local Plunkett nurse. Also in the beginning, you do have your midwives as well. Your GP is also a good place to start. You're going to make mistakes. It's the only way you learn. So listen to the advice and then sit back and think about this is my baby and this is how I want to do it. Sort of rejoice in the mistakes you make because those are your learning steps.